Well, Dan, I've known John Roberts for 20 years. He's an amazingly talented lawyer, but yes, it was a mistake when he was appointed to the Supreme Court. He's a good enough lawyer that he knows in these Obamacare cases, he changed the statute, he changed the law in order to force that failed law on millions of Americans for a political outcome. And, you know, we're frustrated as conservatives. We keep winning elections. And then we don't get the outcome we wanted. Let me focus on two moments in time. Number one, in 1990, in one room was David Souter, in another room was Edith Jones, the rock ripped conservative on the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. George Herbert Walker Bush appointed David Souter. And then in 2005, in one room was John Roberts, in another room was my former boss, Mike Ludig, the rock ripped conservative on the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. Thank you, sir. George W. Bush appointed John Roberts. And let me give you the consequences of that. If instead the President Bushes had appointed Edith Jones and Mike Ludig, which is who I would have appointed, Obamacare would have been struck down three years ago, and the marriage laws of all 50 states would be on the books. These matter, and I've fought to defend the Constitution my whole life, and I will as President as well. I want to let you respond. Well, first of all, he, as I said, he supported John Roberts. He supported him publicly. So you can rewrite history, I guess, Ted, but the simple fact is that you supported him because he had... Uh, all the criteria that you would have you would have thought would have made a great justice, and I think he is doing a good job. But the simple fact is, going forward, what we need to do is to have someone that has a long-standing set of uh, rulings that consistently makes it clear that he is focused exclusively on upholding the Constitution of the United States. That he, they won't try to use the bench as a means by which to to legislate, and that's what we should do. Thank and you, I Governor. hope I'll be working with members of the United States Senate to fight hard for the passage of people that have that kind of qualification. Senator Cruz, 30 seconds. It is true that after George W. Bush nominated John Roberts, I supported his confirmation. That was a mistake, and I regret that. I wouldn't have nominated John Roberts, and indeed, Governor Bush pointed out why. It wasn't that the President Bush has wanted to appoint a liberal to the court. It's that it was the easier choice. Both David Souter and John Roberts, they didn't have a long paper trail. If you'd nominated Edith Jones or Mike Ludig, you would have had a bloody fight, and they weren't willing to spend political capital to put a strong judicial conservative on the court. I have spent my entire life, starting from clerking for Chief Justice William Rehnquist on the United States Supreme Court, one of the most principled jurists. We have an out-of-control court, and I give you my word, if I'm elected president, every single Supreme Court justice will faithfully follow the law and will not act like philosopher kings Thanks, imposing Senator. their liberal policies on millions you, of Americans who need to be trusted to govern our state. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> Governor Huckabee, I want to bring you in very quickly if you could. Will you have a litmus test when it comes to appointing Supreme Court nominees? You better believe I will, because I'm tired of liberals always having a litmus test and conservatives are supposed to pretend we don't. Well, let me tell you what mine would be. Number one, I'd ask, do you think that the unborn child is a human being, or is it just a blob of tissue? I'd want to know the answer to that. I'd want to know, do you believe in the First Amendment? Do you believe that religious liberty is the fundamental liberty around which all the other freedoms of this country are based? And I'd want to know, do you really believe in the Second Amendment? Do you believe that we have an individual right to bear arms, to protect ourselves and our family, and to protect our country? And do you believe in the... Fifth and the Fourteenth Amendment. Do you believe that a person, before they're deprived of life and liberty, should in fact have due process and equal protection under the law? Because if you do, you're going to do more than defund Planned Parenthood. One final thing. I'd make darn sure that we absolutely believe the Tenth Amendment. Every governor on this stage would share this much with you. Every one of us. Our biggest fight wasn't always with the legislature or even with the Democrats. My gosh, half the time it was with the federal government who apparently never understood that if it's not reserved in the Constitution, then the Tenth Amendment says it's left to the states, but somebody forgot to send a memo to Washington. Thank you, Governor. Now, we're going to take a quick break. Coming up, one of